won a football game. You have to celebrate that. But you also have to know, if you don't, go back and look at everything that you're doing. It's easy to be on the other side. So let's use tonight to self-evaluate. We're gonna do it as coaches. We're gonna self-evaluate how we can do a better job, and you should self-evaluate and say, how can I do a better job? We've got three games left. Three games left, and you all know what we want. We gotta focus better, and we gotta get on top of it. Does everybody got it? Yes, sir. Perfect. <laughs>Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I am Jack Nolan, coming to you this week from the home team locker room inside Notre Dame Stadium. The Fighting Irish took control of their game with Wake Forest by scoring 24 second quarter points on the way to a 48-37 win over the Demon Deacons. The Irish were not pleased. They gave up more than 20 points for the first time this season, but there was plenty to celebrate on both sides of the football. Linebacker Tavon Coney had another terrific game, leading the Irish with 12 tackles that included a sack among his three tackles for loss. Quarterback Julian Love set up Notre Dame's second touchdown with his third interception of the year and now has a school record 14 pass breakups this season after recording three on Saturday. Meanwhile, the Notre Dame offense was awesome. Even with Heisman Trophy candidate Josh Adams limited to five carries, the Irish rushed for 380 yards and passed for 330. The 710 yards in total offense missed tying the all-time Notre Dame record by just 10 yards. Leading the way was Brandon Wimbush. The first-year starter at quarterback threw for a career-high 280 yards and a touchdown while rushing for 110 more yards and two more TDs, a performance that earned him the game ball. I think I've done a great job of, of going through the week and preparing myself to, to come out here and execute a little bit more each week um, on Saturday. So um, I think the progression is heading the right way for the entire offense. There have been themes through the year. In camp, I think it started as grit. Then it became dominate. And now it may be dominate and don't flinch. For the second straight week, you got scored on first and you didn't flinch. Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at this football team, so many of those uh, words have to come into your season. It's such a long season. Uh, the teams that you play are all, you know, really good at, at preparing as well. And so uh, I think it's just natural that those things are going to happen. And our team doesn't flinch. And again, Wake Forest executed very well, got three points on the board. Um, but it's our turn now to get our opportunity to score. And generally, our team is really good at responding. When you talk about your team doesn't flinch, team should be in capital letters because it's everybody contributing. And what really got you going was the 52-yard kickoff return by C.J. Sanders. Yeah, it was really nice. I mean, he's one step away from taking that to, to a touchdown. And great return, gives us great field position. And then offensively, it puts us in a great position to, to get seven points on the board. In addition to Brandon's playmaking, his decision making is getting better and better. You're third and goal early. This is a huge down. He makes a great decision and then a great run. We've told him down there, look, if you're not sure, absolutely sure about the throw, take off because everybody's in coverage. And, you know, he's so dynamic with the football in his hands. If he doesn't have a great throw or a great look, he's going to take off. He's pretty nifty and he scores a touchdown. Now, after that score by Brandon, your defense comes up big. Tavon Coney again led the defense with 12 tackles, three tackles for loss. And the big play on this drive was a sack by Tavon. Yeah, I mean, we got after the quarterback a little bit in this drive. We were trying to get him off balance. We didn't get the kind of pressure that we thought we were going to get with some of the, the, the five on five matchups. So Tavon was able to get some pressure there, disrupt the quarterback and 
we were able to get off the field. As we go through the big plays, the defense made a lot of them. After the Yoon field goal on the drive where you force the punt, Julian Love comes up with his third interception of the season. He's got 14 pass breakups. That's a school record, and uh, that sets up another touchdown. Yeah, just a great individual play, stepping in front of a, a quick game route into the boundary and uh, takes it all the way down to the to five-yard line, makes it an easy uh, opportunity for us to convert another touchdown. And that's what our defense has done all year. They've given us great field position, given us an opportunity and some easy scores, and that was a big play for us. Wake Forest has scored a lot of points on a lot of people this year. They kept scoring on you, but you kept answering. After they made it 17-10, playmaker Brandon again, 50-yard touchdown run. Yeah, we had set the play up. We were running our rollovers, and uh, you know they're matching them pretty hard. And Brandon saw a great uh, lane to take off, and uh, I want to get his GPS numbers on that. I know uh, we talked about Josh Adams last week about his GPS being about 2273 miles per hour. I want to see what that GPS when it comes in tomorrow because it looked like he was moving pretty good. It was just a great run. Just before the half, 99-yard touchdown drive that I know you really like. Well, Mike McGlinchey jumped offside, so it's really 99 and a half <laughs> yards. He wanted me to make sure that that got on the record All because right. he's responsible for the longest drive in the history of Notre Dame football because he purposely jumped offside. So it, it feels better that way, he thought. But it was just a great drive. I mean, it was one where, you know, we threw the ball when we needed to a few times, but it was really just well executed, uh, the ability to run the football and control the line of scrimmage. You start the second half up 31-10, but you knew it wasn't enough, and you needed to get off to a good start. They had the ball. Can you get off to a better start than the play Dalen Hayes made? No, uh, and, and that's the thing. I mean, the first thing was we got a get good kickoff, we got good coverage, um, and that was the challenge that we had at halftime, up 31-10. to 10. All right, how are we going to respond? And our defense did a great job. We get three and out. We get into a really good rhythm there. Uh, and I, I was pleased. And, and unfortunately, from that point on, Although we do some really good things offensively, uh, we may have let our guard down a little bit defensively. So you force a punt from that drive, you get a field goal, and then a little bit later, Wimbush hits Chase Claypool for a 34-yard touchdown, does a great job getting in the end zone. He had a great day, nine catches for 180 yards. Yeah, he did. He made some really nice catches. He probably wants the double move that he dropped on the sideline back, but at least he came back, and that's the great thing. Focus, refocus. He refocused on what he needed to do, and that was get back in the moment, make a play, and he made some nice plays for us. Heading into the game, you were asked a lot about the perception that Notre Dame this year had a one-dimensional offense. And you admitted, I'd like it to be more balanced. Well, you ended up with 710 yards in total offense, 10 yards short of the school record, 380 on the ground, 330 through the air, productive and balanced. Yeah, and if we can keep that balance, obviously, we're very, very difficult to defend. And if Brandon's throwing the football consistently like that, and he can get better, that's the nice part about it. He can get better at throwing the football. Um, we're very difficult to defend. It is funny how perceptions change. Coming into the season, the question was, are they gonna be able to stop anybody? And then you don't let anybody score more than 20 points until you get to the Wake Forest game and you give up 37. And now everybody's like, uh-oh, what's the problem? Are you concerned? No, not at all. I mean, look, you know, it's the same thing. You know, we did some things really well. Our communication against the high tempo offense was really good. Um, you know, I thought really for the most part, you know, we have this game in control at 41-16 with about three minutes to go going into the fourth quarter. Uh, we give up 10 points in the first half. So we did some things well. Um, what are we going to do better? Certainly our run fits weren't what they should be, but, you know, we put our guys in some tough situations as well. So we got to coach better. You know, this is not just on the players. This is coaching and players. And I think what we learned is that, you know, this game is such that it's really hard. You can never let your guard down. I think we learned a little bit of a lesson, even up 41-16, uh, Wake Forest never quit. And they were well executing uh, on offense. And, um, you know, I think our guys learned a lot about that. Coach Kelly often emphasizes to his players the importance of playing for their brothers wearing the blue and gold, their teammates. And that is exactly what happened in Notre Dame's victory over Wake Forest. Even though the Irish defense did not have its best day, guys like Tavon Coney, Julian Love, and Dalen Hayes made game-changing plays. And the Irish offense came within 11 yards of gaining more yards in a single game than any Notre Dame football team in history. Football season moves into the stretch run. The Fighting Irish continue to rise. 
We're three quarters through the season. I don't want a new team today. I want the same group of guys. Here come the Irish. For the driving kick, this time Sanders will have the return from the goal line. C.J. Sanders up the numbers, got a block. Sanders puts on the speed, almost got all the way home. Wimbush fires an out pattern. What a play, a first down throw, a beautiful throw and catch. First down, Wimbush rips it to the middle, caught by Durham Smythe. Irish in the red zone. And Wimbush takes a look, puts on moves, and Wimbush darts to the outside. To the pilot, and in for the touchdown! I'm proud of you. Chased by Cody Gallum! Tavon Coney is playing great. We look forward to Wake taking over here. And he throws a pick! Not another pick, six! Julian Love couldn't get down the sideline, but he's out of bounds at the five. His third interception of the season. Go work, go work, go work! Notre Dame in a power set. They go to the run, and Tony Jones bikes it down, takes it in. And the Irish now have scored 16 unanswered points. <laughs> Wimbush takes it himself, running up the middle of the field. He's on the way, all the way home. He's gone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. 50 yard touchdown run. Wheels, what? Stay off, man. It's McIntosh left, cuts it upfield. McIntosh accelerates, put his man down. McIntosh foot race. And Wimbush taking a look. He's on the run. Wimbush inside the 20 and the 10 and down to the goal line. But the Irish concern right now is their quarterback who took a heavy hit on his way to the goal line. Use that second timeout to get organized around Ian Book. Brian Kelly figured it out in the spring. He's got a good number two. It's play action and Book to the end zone. Touchdown, Nick Wisher. Notre Dame goes to the locker room with its biggest lead of this day, 31 to 10. This team's not going to go away. You know that, okay? They rallied once already. They'll rally again. Defensively, you get a stop. Offense, you guys score. All right, let's set the tone in the very first series. That's how we start this second half. Everybody on that? Yes, sir. All right, let's get our job done. Let's go. Jalen Hayes off the corner gets Matt Colburn. A loss of two to start this second half. Third and eight run, and Julian Aquara will have none of that. He and Niles Morgan on the tackle, and it is a one-minute three and out. Brandon Wimbush, he has a left-hand injury that he sustained on the second-to-last play. He was having x-rays done at halftime. Aggressive shot downfield again. Caught by Claypool. To the five-yard line. Get over the field. There goes Claypool. Having a massive day. Claypool. Wimbush with time. Flinging it again. Claypool. This time going for the pylon. And he is in for the touchdown. Big game for the sophomore from British Columbia. The Irish come away with the victory. The championship aspirations continue. The Irish go to eight and one. This process is hard. Now you won a football game. You have to celebrate that. Game ball tonight, Brandon Wimbush. <laughs>One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you. Um, sing a lot, don't sing good. Best thing about being Canadian? Um, the slang and uh, the people. Thoughts on the new video board inside Notre Dame Stadium? Uh, it's a must. Player on the team most like you? Uh, you. Favorite food? Um, uh, Cordon Bleu. One thing you always hear from Coach Alexander in practice? catch the ball. <laughs> What's better, catching a touchdown pass or throwing the block that sets up a touchdown run? Uh, throwing the block. Hardest hitter on the team? Um, Nico Fertitta. Best singer on the team? Um, Wu or Meyer. Best dancer on the team? Uh, Jalen Elliott. Best comedian on the team? Um, EQ thinks it's funny. He's probably the worst though. CJ is funny. Best dresser on the team? Uh, Brandon Wimbush. Worst dresser on the team? Uh, EQ. Best thing about <laughs> playing for Notre Dame? Uh, the fans and people, coaches, everything. Chase Claypool, you've completed the 60-second drill on Inside Notre Dame Football. Thank you.
Notre Dame quarterback Brandon Wimbush continues to get better every game. Against Wake Forest, Wimbush personally accounted for 390 yards in total offense, including a 50-yard sprint to the end zone that gave the Irish a 24-10 second quarter lead. That play is this week's Notre Dame Ticket Exchange Vivid Seats Play of the Week. Setting up first and 20. And designed run, Wimbush, two blockers, leading the space, Wimbush gone, touchdown. It's time now for the experts at Tyrac.com, question of the week for Coach Kelly. This week's question comes from Scott Keen of Nashville, Tennessee. Coach, Tavon Coney has excelled this season. To what do you attribute his tremendous improvement? Well, I think a couple of things. His total preparation has been in the weight room in terms of his physical ability to really transform himself. Uh, I think the coaching, I think his, his mental development has really been locked in on, um, you know, being under control, um, finding that optimal zone where he can play at a high level. Next up for Notre Dame, a trip to Miami where the 8-1 Irish will take on the Hurricanes in South Florida for the first time since 1989. The top 10 ranked Hurricanes are 8-0 after beating a ranked Virginia Tech team 28-10 last weekend. You know, we have to play uh, at a high level. We're playing a very good opponent and, you know, we have to get back to, you know, playing for four quarters and obviously uh, the traits that got us here will be the ones that will allow us to win. And so as long as we get back to our, you know, uh, four quarters uh, of, of focus and attention to detail, It'll be, uh, again, uh, one heck of a football game and one that um, we expect to win. That will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football. Fighting Irish Media will travel with Coach Kelly's squad to Miami and will bring you all the highlights on next week's show. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish! Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame football is also brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of Notre Dame athletics, Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame athletics, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and Sirius XM.